Hello everyone. So today I'm gonna show you the sensorless performance of Solo, especially on this type of motor, which is called internal permanent magnetic synchronous motors, IPMSM. And on this setup, we have actually a huge one. Uh, this is a above 10 kilowatt motor. I believe it's 13 kilowatt motor. And then we have, we have it here with the coupling, coupled to a load, uh, a powder brake, so it can uh, kind of generate up to 70 newton meter uh, torque against the uh, the motor, and then here I'm having Solo Mega, which is able to deliver up to 130 amps uh, into that motor. And as you can see, we haven't connected the encoder or any sensor to the inputs of the controller, so the controller is completely in sensorless fashion. And then the only thing you need to take care about is the connection of STO based on the user manual of Solo. So here. The emergency switch, which is connected to the STO, is released, and uh, STO is working properly. So please follow the data sheet about the STO connection. And now what I'm going to do is showing you how we are able to control this type of motor under load and uh, in no load conditions. So what I have to do is simply go to motion terminal. I have connected everything through USB cable to my PC. So once I get connected to motion terminal, before everything, I need to turn on the system. Once that's done, I'm gonna be able to connect to, to it through motion terminal here. Once I do that, I can see Solomega is detected as, a, as, as the unit. And once I go to action mode, I can see some critical parameters here. For instance, the current limit is set at 110 amps, which is very important parameter for that type of motor, especially in a startup. So we put a very high current limit to push maximum torque. Then there is regeneration current limit. So this current is the current that goes back to the supply. And it's better that you tune it based on your type of supply and how much current you can handle. I don't recommend to put it all the way down to zero because it will reduce the dynamic performance of system, but it's gonna work. It's just for uh, the fact that it's, the higher this value, the better will be the dynamic performance of the whole controller. Then what, what else that matters is the number of poles of the motor. So this motor has eight poles. And as the speed of this motor is not very high, it's only 3,000 RPM, it's okay to stay on a normal brush SDC and PMSM type of motor, especially for motors below 2,000 RPM. Uh, and uh, there is no other special parameter that you need to set in this part of motion terminal. The next thing you need to make sure is you have at least identified the motor parameters once. So I've done this before, I pressed this button before, so I'm not gonna do it again. But if you just do it once, that's enough. And uh, today we're gonna focus on the, the, the first sensorless type that we have, which is this one. And once you select it, you see a, a different menu appearing here, that is the the, the transition speed that you can select here. Usually the transition speed is 20% of the nominal speed of the motor. So as a rule of thumb, if this motor is gonna go to uh, 3000 RPM, I can select transition of 600 RPM for a safer start. But as you saw, I was at 300 RPM and it was working well. But we will start with 600 RPM to follow the rules, 20% of nominal speed at the given voltage. And now I'm in a speed mode. I have already tuned the speed controller KP and KI previously. And the last two parameters that you need to make sure are correctly set are the acceleration and deceleration. So these values, especially for this type of algorithm, are better to not to be too high, or let's say zero, because at zero, you will have a step response. So I put a moderate value of 10 revolution per square second. It's pretty fast, by the way. It's not that slow. But this is gonna guarantee a nice startup. So, if I run the monitoring here, and looking at the IQ and velocity, IQ stands for current inside the motor, which translates directly to torque, and then the velocity in terms of RPM. So, let's just start with uh, any speed above the transition speed. So, if, if I'm gonna go to 1000 RPM, what happens? So, we saw the motor now is operating at 1000 RPM and it's constant. It's consuming around 10 amps now. It's a no-load condition. And uh, 
if you look at the plot, the first phase is the phase that is the transition is happening, so it's partially closed loop. And then the second phase, which is the uh, closed loop, full closed loop operation, it starts after the transition speed. I can go to lower speeds, even 800 RPM. So it's following it. Or I can go to 1200 RPM. So, the motor is at 1,200 RPM now, and the torque is not that much, so we have a very low current consumption for this type of motor. And now in this system we have a powder brake that I just showed you. I can increase the, uh, the torque on the shaft of the motor, so if I just increase right now a little bit the, the current, and zoom a bit, you can see the current now is rising. I can go all the way up to 50 or 60 amps. Yeah, 60 amps now in the motor. And uh, the speed is at 1,200 as we said before. So I can stop the motor right now and start it at such a high load and see how the behavior will be. So if I press motor stop, okay, the motor stopped. And now I can do a startup. So I go at speed reference, I start to go back at 1000 RPM under full load. And here you go. There is a little bit of a, a jump due to high, high load, but the algorithm pretty much recovered. So we can repeat this process one more time. So it can actually go back under heavy load to the required speed and uh, maintain the speed very constant at very high load. I can even keep increasing the load to higher values, 80 amps. So it's very, now is 80 amps in the motor and uh, the speed is constant at 1000. So thank you so much. I hope this was helpful and you could learn something from this video. Please. Don't forget to subscribe into our channel and stay tuned.